What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install RetroPie on a laptop or desktop. Now you can use a newer build, you can use an older build, you can use something that you picked up from the thrift store. Linux and RetroPie x86 are going to work on pretty much any PC that was made after 2006 and some even before. I've even been able to install this on an old Core 2 Duo machine. It works with Intel or AMD. Right here I have a little desk mini with the Ryzen 2400G APU and it performs great on this little machine. I also have a more expensive but much smaller Intel NUC. This is the i7 Bean Canyon. But personally, I like installing RetroPie on older systems, so I'm going to be using this Lenovo Think Center. It's got an i5-2400, 4 gigs of RAM, and I put an NVIDIA GT1030 in here only because that's the smallest card I had that would fit in here besides a GTX 1050. But what we're going to do is install Ubuntu, and then we're going to install RetroPie inside of Ubuntu. If you already have a capable machine running Windows, I recommend using something like LaunchBox or BigBox. There's also other front ends out there, but personally, I use BigBox for my emulation needs. And if you're looking for an all-in-one emulation operating system, I recommend Botocera. I've done several videos on it. I'll leave links in the description. You can actually run the whole operating system from a USB drive. But I know there's a lot of people out there who want the official RetroPie x86 installed on their PC, so that's what we're going to do now. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using this Lenovo Think Center M51. This is an older PC. But before we get started here, there's a few other things that I want to go over. You will need another hard drive. In this video, I'm not going to be dealing with any dual boot or triple boot. I just don't do it on the channel because as soon as somebody starts doing this on their mom's laptop or their school laptop screws up a partition and they can't access their work, it's going to be my fault. So we're going to be installing this to a separate drive. I'm going to be using a 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD, but you could also use a mechanical drive if you have one laying around. I'll leave links to Amazon if you need to pick up an SSD or a new drive. The next thing you're going to need is a USB drive. This is a 32 gigabyte SanDisk USB 3.0 drive. You could use an 8 gigabyte USB 2.0 drive if that's all you have. It'll work fine. We're going to be creating a Linux installation drive with this USB. So we're going to flash the Linux image to it. Then we're going to install it on the PC of our choice. I will be using a Windows machine to flash Linux to this USB drive. And then we're going to install it on the other computer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Ubuntu installed to our USB drive. I have mine inserted into my PC. I'm just going to right click on it. Properties. It's formatted FAT32, but the application we're going to be flashing with is going to take care of everything, so it can pretty much be any format. Just a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive. First thing we want to do is head over to the links in the description and download Ubuntu. We're going to go right here to download. Now there are two versions, 18.04 and 18.10. 18.04 LTS is what I usually use. LTS stands for long-term support but you could always go with 18.10 if you want to. So I'm just going to go with 18.04. We also need to download an application to flash the Linux image to our USB drive. We're going to be using Rufus. Links for everything will be in the description. This is very easy to use. We're going to go right here and download Rufus 3.4. So when these are finished downloading, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. Ubuntu is about 2 gigabytes, and Rufus is going to download pretty quickly. So now that I have everything downloaded, I've just placed it on my desktop. Here's the Linux image and Rufus. We're going to go ahead and open up Rufus. From the drop-down menu at the top, make sure you choose the USB drive you want to flash to. Mine's that 32 gigabyte drive. Click on Select. We have to find our Linux image. I've placed mine on the desktop. Double click. So now all we need to do is click start. It's going to give us a few warnings here. This image uses syslink 6.03. We'll just click yes here. And we want to write in ISO image mode. It's going to give us a warning that our USB drive is going to be erased and it's going to install Linux to it. Click OK. Now this could take anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes depending on how fast your USB drive is. Just let it finish up. The USB drive is now finished. All we need to do is take the USB from this PC, move over to the PC we want to install Linux on, and boot it up. 
Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be going on a fresh drive. And by fresh drive, it doesn't have to be a new drive. It just has to be a drive that you have no data you want to keep on because we're going to totally erase it. We're also going to need to enter the boot menu when we start up the other computer. All manufacturers are different. So for instance, like if you have a Dell, F12 should bring you to the boot menu when you start your computer. On this Lenovo that I'm using, F12 is the same key. But other companies use keys like F2, Delete, F4, F8, F5. The best thing to do is search online for the manufacturer of your PC and find out how to enter the boot menu. Okay, so let's go ahead and install Linux. I have a keyboard and mouse plugged in. I also have my USB drive we just flashed. We need to plug that into the PC. I'm gonna press power on this unit and I'm gonna press F12. This is a Lenovo, F12 will bring me into the boot menu. So your menu may look a little different than this. As you can see, it says USB key. That's the SanDisk USB that I have plugged in. I also have two options, legacy or UEFI. If you have a newer PC, I recommend using UEFI. Even though this unit does support UEFI, it's an older version and I stick with legacy on most things that I use with it. So I'm gonna go with legacy. It's gonna boot the USB drive we flash Linux to in legacy mode. And I'm gonna position my camera a little closer to the screen so it's easier to see. But when we're doing the RetroPie install, I will use my HDMI game capture. It's just gonna make it easier on everybody. It's gonna walk you through how to install it. It's really simple to do. You'll have a try button and an install button. We wanna install, so I'm gonna click this one over here. Next thing I wanna do is choose my keyboard layout. You can choose whatever you want. For me, I'm gonna go with a normal installation. You can go with minimal, but you will have a lot of updating to do, so I do recommend choosing normal. And at the very bottom here, we're also gonna install third-party drivers, like GPU drivers, audio drivers, and things like that. So I'm gonna leave the first one checked and the last one, and choose continue. I already had Ubuntu installed on this drive that I'm using, the SSD but I'm gonna choose the very first one. I wanna erase this drive. Now, if you had Windows installed on it, it won't say that you had Windows installed. It'll just ask you if you wanna erase it. Like I mentioned a couple of times, this isn't a dual boot or triple boot tutorial. We're gonna be running this off of one single drive, so I'm gonna erase the whole drive. Now, it's really simple to do a dual boot with Linux and Windows, but in this video, we're not focusing on that. If you really wanna do that, there are tons of tutorials online. Now we need to choose where we are for time zones and who are you? So I'm just gonna input ETA Prime. My username's gonna be ETA Prime and I'm gonna put in a simple password, but I'm also gonna choose automatic login so I don't have to do my password every time I turn the PC on. When you're finished with this section, the installation process is gonna start. This really depends on how fast the drive is you're using. For me, it takes about six minutes on this SSD. It could take a lot longer on a mechanical drive. My installation is now complete. We need to restart the PC. I usually just unplug my USB drive and click restart. And here it is. We now have Ubuntu installed on our PC. It's time to install RetroPie. Like I said, I'm gonna plug this into my HDMI capture so you can see it a little better. Okay, so we're now successfully running Linux. It's time to install RetroPie. You will need to be connected online for this part. I'm just using a simple Wi-Fi dongle I got on Amazon, but I do recommend plugging into Ethernet. It's just gonna make everything a lot quicker. If you're using a Wi-Fi adapter or your PC has Wi-Fi built in, just use this drop-down menu and connect to your network from here. The easiest way to install RetroPie on your Linux machine is head over to the RetroPie documentation page here. This is RetroPie x86 documentation. I'll leave a link for the specific page in the description. Installation, first we need to install Ubuntu, then we need to run the RetroPie setup. So we gotta get into terminal. It's easy to do. You can either search here for terminal or from your keyboard, press Control Alt T. It's gonna bring up a terminal window. I'm gonna snap my browser over to the right hand side. First up, 
we're going to do this command. This is sudo apt get update sudo apt get upgrade. This is going to upgrade our Linux installation. You'll be prompted for your password that you created. And this could take a little time here, depending on how many updates it needs to download. When running some of these commands in the terminal, you might be prompted to press Y or no for yes or no. I just recommend going with yes. Press enter. When the first update's complete, we're going to do sudo apt git install y git dialog. So this is going to install git for us. Copy, right click, paste, enter. Next, we need to clone the retropy setup.sh. Copy, paste. Now we're going to cd into the RetroPie setup script we just downloaded or cloned. This is going to bring the terminal to that directory. And now we're going to run the setup script. So if you've ever messed around with the Raspberry Pi, this looks very familiar. This is the RetroPie setup.sh. Press OK. At the very top, we want to do a basic install. Since we just installed it, it should be fully updated. You can always run an update RetroPie setup script if you want to, but I'm just going to go with basic install, click OK, and yes. Now this could take a little while depending on your internet connection. I've actually had this take up to an hour before, so let it finish up. When it's finished, it'll tell you it's done. And by the way, I actually recommend turning sleep off while you're running this because it could take a little while and your computer screen is going to go black. You might think it shut off. I like to monitor it. So I'm going to go up to this drop down, my tools. From here, we'll go to power, black screen. I'm just going to click never. When RetroPie is finished installing, you'll be brought back to the RetroPie setup script menu. From here, we can install some extra features like GameCube and Wii emulation. So to do that, we want to go to Manage Packages, press Enter. Manage Experimental Packages, press OK. Scroll down until you see Dolphin, press OK, and install from source. This is going to install the Dolphin emulator so we can emulate GameCube and Wii games. And if we take a look at the experimental packages, there's even more in here. Um, scroll down until we find PlayStation 2. You can go ahead and experiment with these. There's tons of information over on the official RetroPie x86 page here. So if you take a look at the right hand side, how do I map controls in Dolphin? So this is something you're going to want to know. It's right here. Very easy to do. I'm going to go back back and exit. I can shut the terminal window down now. From our little application menu here, we can search for RetroPie. Right click, we can add to favorites. It's going to be over on the right hand side now. So we can start it up. No game pads detected. You'll need to plug in your PS4 controller, your Xbox controller, or if you're using Bluetooth, go ahead and set that up. You could also map your keyboard if you'd like to. I'm just going to plug in an Xbox One controller, as you can see. Now we can map it. Here's our D-pad. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A button, B button, X button, Y button, left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumbstick, we're going to press down, this will be L3, R3, and our analogs, up, down, left, right up, down, left, right. For the hotkey, I usually map it as my Xbox button or select. I'm going to go with the Xbox button. When you're done, press whatever button you mapped as B and it'll bring us into RetroPie. So obviously we don't have any games installed. We need to do that now. I'm going to press start, scroll down to quit, and I'm going to quit emulation station. 
let's go ahead and add some games. Now, if you already have a Raspberry Pi set up with RetroPie, you could actually just plug that SD card into this PC and transfer all of your ROMs over. Or you can use an external drive like I have here. It's a two terabyte drive. I do have some games here. This is my external drive. Now we need to find the RetroPie ROMs directory. We're gonna open right here, right click, new window. If we take a look, we have a RetroPie folder now. Double click, ROMs, and you're just gonna drop your games in the correct folder. So for instance, N64 on my Linux machine. I have some N64 games on my external drive over here. Just gonna take them, copy them over. I'm gonna go back, do the same for a couple others. SNES. And I'll do 32X. We also have a BIOS folder here. This is just like installing BIOSes on your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. So you're gonna put all of your BIOSes in here, except for, I believe, the only one that you don't is Neo Geo. You put it in with the Neo Geo games. So we now have games installed. We can go ahead and start up RetroPie. And now we can start playing our favorite retro games. You can press start. You can do a scrape on these games to download box art if you want to. But for now, I'm just gonna, gonna go in here and start a game up. N64, 007 GoldenEye. And we're now playing N64 on RetroPie x86. As you can see, running really smooth here. To exit, press start in your hotkey. And that's pretty much it for this video. I do want to show you one more thing. I know a lot of people want to start up RetroPie as soon as their PC starts, so we're going to exit out of here. There's a couple ways to do this, but I find that the easiest way is to download a third-party application. So we're going to go to Show Applications, Software. At the top here, we're going to search for Tweaks. We're going to go for Genome Tweaks, Install, Launch, Startup Applications. The very bottom here, we should see RetroPie. Add. Close it down. Now as soon as your PC starts up, RetroPie is going to launch for you. You can also remove it by going back to that Tweaks menu. Start up applications and just remove. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. There is a learning curve to RetroPie x86. There's a few things we need to do different in here, but a lot of the information can be found over on the RetroPie x86 documentation page. Link is in the description. If you have any questions, check there first. If you can't figure it out, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try my hardest to get back to you. And like always, thanks for watching.